welcome to this week's episode of We Are The Bonsai Supply. I am Jerome and in this week's episode, I wanted to explain to you how you can easily acclimate your trees. Now, whether that's uh, acclimating your tree from overwintering from inside to the outside, or whether that's acclimating your tree from one climate to another. So this tree is a, this is a desert rose and a denium, and it's probably my favorite desert rose that I own. And it's also the one that I have had the longest. Now this desert rose, I named it the squid. And the squid has always lived in Florida where the temperatures right now are around 80 degrees to 95 during the day and about 75 to 80 at night, depending on where you are. But that was the case in Fort Lauderdale. Now recently I moved this tree up to Georgia and now in Georgia, it's a completely different climate. It is much further north and in Georgia, the temperatures are much different. And um, during the day, they're around 65 to 70 degrees. And at night, they drop all the way down to 40 degrees. So naturally, I'm, I started to get some uh, black spots on my leaves, right? Uh, a lot of these leaves have turned black and that was expected. So whenever you get these black spots, that, mean, that can mean a couple different things. So when you have a green leaf and you have black spots, that's usually from overwatering. So, but in this case, um, the entire leaf is covered in black, not just little spots, as you can see. So that means uh, one of two things, either that the leaves were sunburned or that they were uh, burned due to cold. Now, in my case, they were burned due to cold. All right, so the first step that we have to do to acclimate this tree to now this uh, northern climate, we have to go ahead and defoliate the entire tree. Now, when I work with tropical trees, I always acclimate them either when I acclimate them into the uh, winter protection or when I bring them out to the outdoors, right? So every time I move the tree from a different uh, climate or situation, I always defoliate. So. Uh, now that this tree came from Florida to Georgia, I'm going to go ahead and defoliate it so that the tree can naturally acclimate and when it starts to fill out the canopy again, then the tree will be acclimated. When I move this tree, when it gets cold again and I move it inside uh, into my uh, winter storage, I'm going to defoliate it again. And then in spring, before I bring it back outside or late spring, I'm going to defoliate it again. So very simple, every time you move it into a different location, always defoliate it. So now for this job, of course, I'm going to call in Mari to help me out. So Mari is here and she's going to help me to defoliate. And defoliating a desert rose is very, very easy. All right, so Mari is holding the tip of the branch and then she's just grabbing the leaves and she's just pulling them back until they naturally fall off. So there's no need in cutting the leaves off. Uh, sometimes at the very tip, where there's very small uh, leaves and very young leaves, those sometimes you want to uh, cut them off instead of pull them off because they can break off the whole tip. But in this case, um, looks like you're doing it pretty well. We're just pulling them off. What about the flowers? The flowers, you can pull them off too. All right, so we're going to remove everything, all the flowers too, all the leaves. And once we have defoliated the entire tree, we're going to take this opportunity and of course, rewire all the branches and reshape them as well. All right, so right in here is what is kind of bothering me a little bit. So you see one branch here, one above, right, one right next to it and one down here. So these branches kind of don't make you uh, appreciate the swoop that we have going on in here, right? So this should be highlighted more so that you can see the whole curve of the tree more. So these branches definitely have to go. Now I just have to make a decision on which branches I'm gonna take and which I'm gonna leave. So this one is the first one that I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove because that one is too close to the very first uh, bend here of the tree. And that tree almost takes away the uh, the curve, the swoop of the branch. Now, when I work on the denims, I always use a sharp pair of scissors. There's no need to use concave cutters or anything like that. These will cut right through the branches fairly easy. So whenever I cut back a, a desert rose, um, or whenever I cut on a desert rose, I just make a straight cut 
and then I wait until this part starts to die back and then once this turns to a like a dark brown and callus is over completely that's when I can go ahead and cut it back just a little further now the next branch that I want to remove is this one in here because this branch here is coming out of the exact same spot as the branch below now the reason why I, I removed the top one and leave the bottom one is just because the bottom one has so much better oops has has a lot better movement it naturally has really great movement so it comes out and then the it just comes out it has a nice curve and also it has nice branch placement so the top branch needs to go and again flush cut and then again this here I'm just gonna let it dry out and then come back later and clean it up some more yeah so now I can bring this down yeah it's gonna look much better All right, so this branch, I'm not 100% sure yet. I might keep it, I might get rid of it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wire out the tree and then we're gonna see as we get. Now you can wire this tree just like any other tree. Um, I use aluminum wire and, and you really wire this just like any other tree. So as you can see here, this little area here was affected from the, this was, this was probably not affected from the cold, but uh, over the winter, it probably got too much water and probably not enough direct sunlight. So that's why I have a little area here that was starting to rot and then dry out. I'm still gonna go in here and carve all of this out. The same as I did down here you want to make sure that you remove all of that rot here and then go back to the green here and then that will heal over in a couple of weeks and it'll look like nothing had ever happened now this big one here is going to take a little more time so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take all of this soft stuff out right here and then I'm going to let it dry out and I'm gonna let it dry out by obviously just not watering it. Now, if this was, um, if this black stuff here was um, black and hard, I wouldn't worry about it, but it is soft. So I just wanna remove it all just to make sure that, you know, it's not gonna to continue to rot. 
and then you can fill this wound here with um, either the limestone paste or you can use like a, a regular cut paste or like a putty but I, I'm gonna use a um, lime, limestone paste that's always my go-to in situations like this just because it helps to dry out the area more yeah that's much better So I'm going to cover this entire uh, hole here with a uh, limestone paste. I'm just going to uh, knead it and then just fill it up and then just leave it. And I'm not going to water this section here and this section here for quite a while as well as this side. I'm just going to water just the base. Usually in the morning I water the entire uh, cardex of the, of the adenium. I just water right around here. But since I have this large opening over here now, I'm not going to water here because this will fill up with water. Now I'm going to have to watch the weather for the next couple of days and in case it does start to water and uh, in case it does start to rain that's what I'm going to have the uh, limestone paste for and once the limestone paste uh, dries up and you water it again it'll turn to mush again or like a paste so you do want to make sure that you keep this area dry so what I could do is fill this area with uh, limestone paste and then use like an aluminum tape uh, that has one side aluminum and the other side is like a sticky tape or I could also use regular tape and just tape over the section so that the um, limestone paste does not get wet again but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to put the limestone paste in here let it dry out and once the limestone paste is completely dried and starts to crackle that's when I'm going to cover it with uh, tape so that I don't trap the humidity in here right so I want to release it make sure that this area is completely bone dry and then cover it with tape just so that no rainwater gets in there. So just to summarize what we've uh, talked about in this video today is that this technique is used when the leaves are damaged, which they were. Um, also you can use the foliation technique when you want to develop your tree with more ramification, right? In this case, I used the foliation technique to acclimate my tree, right? So that means I'm gonna go really easy on this tree this year. I'm not gonna to expect too much. I'm not gonna push it too much. I'm just gonna let it come uh, back naturally, healthy and happy. And I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna make sure that this tree is gonna be as happy and healthy as possible. I'm probably also not gonna repot this tree unless it gets extremely hot this year that I might repot it. But uh, I think I'm fine for another year at least. Uh, it's not gonna hurt anything. So. All right, so as you can see, I uh, filled the holes with the uh, limestone paste and the paste is already starting to crackle. So I know it is already starting to dry out. So this is really good because now I know it's not continuing to rot inside of the adenium. Um, if you guys want to learn more about desert roses, I did put a, a crash course together on where I share my tips and tricks that have worked for me. I'm going to leave the link below in the description and you can go ahead and check it out. Please make sure that you guys like this video and uh, please subscribe and I hope that you guys are staying safe and are well and I will catch you guys next time.